So rather than jumping into all of the details like I normally do in my other videos, today I wanted to basically just jump straight into this kit that I received from a company called Yo's Power. And essentially Yo's Power is a company that do e-bike conversion kits. So I wrote, wrote to them and they sent me out a kit that I installed onto a mountain bike and I'll leave an iCard and a link in the description and affiliate link to have a look at the video that I installed where I installed the kit onto a mountain bike. And you can also, if you're interested in this kit, you can have a look at the affiliate link down below. Um, I do highly recommend it for the money. It's, it's like right off the bat, it's totally worth doing. But this video is going to be focusing on installing this same kit onto, I basically took this exact same kit and I installed it onto my road bike. This road bike is a Triban RC500. It's from Decathlon, it's just a standard stock model. The only difference with this one is that I, I got a flat bar with that. And what I did is I installed a drop bar onto it. I put a um, pair of shifters on the top, which are from a company called Sensar. They're uh, a sort of more budget friendly version of Shimano. So the shifters are from AliExpress on Sensar Ignite. That's the, the model name. And they work really well with the Shimano group set, which is installed on this bike. I won't go too much into the details of what's basically on the bike because I'm going to be focusing more on the kit. You've got, so you've got two chain rings on the front and then on the back, you've got a nine speed cassette. I put an aero bar on the top. That's essentially it. Everything else is pretty much stock from what you get from Decathlon. And I, I definitely highly recommend the, the bike. I already have reviews on that. So let's let's now talk about the kit. So that's primarily what I'd like to jump into. So personally, I went with a more powerful motor. I just felt that I live in a more hilly area. And I will say that when you have this motor paired with this battery on a road bike, I'm telling you the efficiency when you're riding is pretty incredible. It's a, it's a really quick bike, but it's also, I feel like it's also quite an efficient bike considering the money. I mean, you can pick up one of these road bikes secondhand for like 500 euros if you're lucky. That's the lowest I think you could go. And if you want to go even on a cheaper budget, you could go for a mountain bike like the Rock Rider and then you could put thinner tires. So you could do that as well. But this thing is fast, I will tell you that. They list all of the details on the Yo's Power website for the speed. I can confirm the speed is absolutely accurate and that the motor is, is really, really pretty decent going uphill. The kit itself comes with a 13 amp hour battery. It's the same one that I installed on the mountain bike. It's a 36 volt, 13 amp hour battery. And then we've got a, a, quite a decent, powerful motor on the back, which you can have a look at the details on Yo's Power's website. You get a charge controller, which is built into the mounting bracket for the battery. And you get all the cabling that you need. I decided to have the cabling route above on the, on the uh, dropout on the top of that bar just because I knew it would be easier if I need to do a change of tire. If I get a flat, it's easier if the cable's going up rather than on the chainstay. The cable management, I, I love how they give you basically too much cabling, but at the same time, there is a lot of cabling. So I had to route it above the, the seat tube on the top there and it, it does a job. And um, you also get uh, an accelerator, so you get a throttle with that. Uh, depending on which country you're in, you need to decide whether that's going to work for you or not. I, I highly recommend having one for just those moments where you're, you need to get a, a, a going start where it's just like really instant. And then you get a display. The button placement, the, the, it's an interesting, to, to get this to fit on the road bike, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about the challenges I had to go through. But essentially, I had to get a little bar extension which goes away from the drop bar to be able to fit these, comp these little things like the accelerator and the, um, the display because they're not designed to fit on a road bike bar. And I decided to hide it just below my aero bar and it works really well. The button placement's a bit tricky to access, but I can turn it on and off and it does work. And I'm really happy with that. That's, that's essentially what you get in the kit. What you need to do is, I already have an installation video which explains all that, but essentially you need to get the tire and the cassette, disc rotor, the rim tape, basically all of that needs to come from your last wheel, basically your, your old wheel, and you have to transfer that onto the newer wheel. You make sure you get the right wheel size so that everything's corresponding with each other. I did do something else different on the mountain bike, which I explained in the mountain bike video for the Rock Rider. But for this, I decided to go with the 28 inch 
wheels. So it's a 700C wheel, which is the standard road bike size. And I can confirm that a 700C tire with a 28 millimeter width works really well with this, with this wheel. And there's a nine speed cassette on the back, uh, which is just a standard micro shift cassette from Decathlon. The disc rotor was the same one and that's about it. There's nothing else changed on that. You do have a rim brake surface, so you can use rim brakes if you want to use it for that purpose. Something you need to really keep in mind when you're installing this, does your dropout have enough space? I believe the width is 135 millimeter to 142 or 140 millimeter. That's your tolerance. So basically, if you're over that or below that, you will not be able to fit this wheel and this motor onto your road bike. So that is crucial to make sure that the, the dropouts can fit the axle and that the distance between the two dropouts is, is gonna fit the wheel and the motor. That was kind of like, okay, that's kind of the same process as the mountain bike. And the bottle cage, I had to get a little adapter to boost the, the distance further up along the, the down tube because uh, my bottle cage mounts were too low. So I had to get a, an adapter which put the battery further up and it worked really well. I was like really surprised how well that worked. Those were the two parts that I already knew how to overcome. What was really difficult with this installation, which you, if you wanna do this, you have to keep in mind it's quite difficult, is to get the, the magnet sensors for the brake sensor to work and to fit them properly, and then also the pedal assist sensor. Two things I wanna mention, which are the most crucial part, is the Holotech pedal assist sensor, the Holotech 2 one, is designed for a triple crank system, not a double crank, which is what I have. And I basically just had to, when I installed it, which was difficult to install and take off, and if you want a more detailed video on that, I can explain, but essentially I had to zippy tie it and tape it kind of roughly to itself and to fit it basically in between the space where there would be that third ring. And it works, we'll see how it goes in the next few years, how, how or months, how well that'll hold up, but that was the best way I could fit it without like causing any holes or, or fixing it with bolts and stuff like that. You basically have to get the magnets to stay in place and to stay fixed with the rotation of the crank and to not interfere with the bottom bracket. Now, you also have to take the bottom bracket, the Holotech 2 off, which is a bit tricky as well. You need a special proprietary tool for that. Then you have to fit this silver ring, basically, in, but you have to sandwich it between the frame's bottom bracket fixing and the bottom bracket cap. You basically have to fix it in between. That's how it holds on. Once you basically get over that, that was one way to do it. So if you wanna do this installation, you can follow what I'm doing. And that's how I decided to do it. And then the last thing, like I was mentioning, which is the most difficult, is to get the brake sensor to basically fit onto the lever. So essentially the way it works is you've got two magnets. When they're close together, you can engage the motor and the motor will basically start and push you forward. When the magnets are further away, that's a kill switch. So it basically not, it disengages the motor. Um, you, don't, you don't get any power assist. And it's a safety feature when you're going downhill or you're allowed to traffic lights it's, um, and you basically don't want to turn the crank forward or spin it forward and then it engages the motor. It's a, it's a safety feature. If you have like a, a, a very brief moment where you have to stop immediately. Now one trick around this if you don't want to even install this is you can just backpedal instead and you have to remember to do that. It'll disengage it. So. That's one way around that if you don't want to install these brakes. I basically hid the sensor under the silicon cover on the top of the shifter, and then I hid it behind the bar tape, and then it connects where the display also connects in the throttle. And then the magnet is basically super glued to the, to the lever. We'll see how that holds up over, over time. You might need to use an epoxy rather than super glue. I'm just kind of doing this as a prototype, and then we kind of, I will make adjustments. So I also bought, magnet tape, which you could try to use with uh, M3 um, adhesive. So you can try that. But those are the two major hurdles. And then apart from that, the e-bike kit works basically the same way it does on the mountain bike. I can confirm that I have a suspicion that the range is slightly further on the uh, road bike, which was one of my, my, my things I wanted to test. I did do a 70K ride where I rode to a shop and then I did my shopping grocery. I bought like 10 or 11 kilos of stuff and then I rode back. 
and I did 70K with pretty much full assistance, very light pedaling. I didn't push that hard because I was really testing to see how far can the motor push you forward. I did not run it on the maximum level on level five. You need to bring it down to level four to get the maximum range. If you run it on maximum, you'll go faster, but you're going to reduce your range. So I didn't want to do that. I also did another test where I carried my music equipment, so an amplifier and a guitar, basically totaling about eight to nine kilos of extra weight. And I rode basically as far as it could and it, I still had one bar left and I did just under 50 kilometers with uh, the extra weight. So the nice thing is that with the road bike, the whole kit with the road bike totals around 19 kilos. The bike itself without any of the accessories, the rack, the aero bar, this kit, would weigh about 11 kilos, I believe, something like that. But that's not bad. So the road bike is fairly lightweight just right off the bat. And if you take the battery off, the, the bike weighs about 16 kilos. If I took the aero bar, bars off, it would be even closer to 15 kilos plus the rack. Um, so you can actually do rides where you leave the motor installed and you just don't use it and you can leave the battery at home if you don't want to you know because it's a road bike you can still ride pretty quick you know you don't but whenever you're doing these rides where you need um to go faster but you want to carry extra weight this is where i use an e-bike basically because i want to arrive at my destination not completely exhausted um, save my energy and and just enjoy actually a different riding perspective I, i've really enjoyed that with an e-bike plus i charge this via solar which is free energy coming off the roof so it's a no-brainer to me if you have any other uh, questions about that, just leave some comments below. Again, there's an affiliate link down below. There's a coupon code in case you're interested uh, where you can get uh, a few bucks off your purchase and uh, save a bit of money on the delivery, for example. And if you purchase it straight from your web, from Yoast Power's website, you will get the best price when you do that from them. Stay tuned for some further updates on this kit, how well this fares over many years of use. I'm very curious about how many after thousands of kilometers how well the, the battery and the motor hold up and that's about it so thanks for watching and i hope to see you in a future video